In this video in the Sims newbie guide series, we are going to be taking a look at create a sim, otherwise known as CAS, the different controls, creating a sim from scratch, creating a sim using story mode, making relationships and personalities, as well as creating sims of different age groups and going through their unique features. All of this coming up. Hi, I'm Weeza and welcome back to We Sims. I'm a long time simmer and have a big passion for computers. And on this channel, I help you navigate the more technical side of things with computer guides, fixes and recommendations such as the Sims Newbie Guide. So the Sims Newbie Guide is essentially the ultimate beginner's guide to The Sims 4. I wanted to make something that can be a nice reference guide for future. So I'm going to have some timestamps that are gonna pop up here in the corner. They should also be in the video's chapters here below. So you can jump to the ones that interest you the most, unless you want a comprehensive overview of the entire Creator Sim experience, in which case sit back, relax, grab a cup of tea, and let's get creator simming. Let's create a sim. So when first starting up The Sims 4, you will be taken to this page. Just ignore this collection here, even though it says that I've installed most of them, they're actually not in the game at the moment, just for the purpose of having a game that would look as though you just bought it with no custom content or mods installed and no DLC installed. So here, when we want to start a new family, we're going to go to new game. Once you have hit the new game button, you're going to be taken to this create a sim page. Okay, so at the beginning, you can make this decision as to whether you want to go through something called the create a sim stories tool. Like they say here, go through a quiz that will generate a personality as well as an aspiration for your sim. Thereafter, you can customize their appearance. There are some other benefits to this. Your sims can come based on their story with skills. They can come with a little more money, a little less money. They can come employed already. So there's quite a couple of benefits to taking this route. Uh, but if you wanted to just go the complete custom route, then you would say no thanks here. But just for demonstrative purposes, I am going to be going through the creator story tool. And if you're not interested in this tool, you can just skip forward to the next timestamp. I'll put it on the screen somewhere. You can go on to where we will be creating a custom sim from the beginning. So I'm gonna say, okay, here. Yeah. So let's start with an easy question. What age am I? Let's be interesting here. I'm gonna say an adult. Questions like these will, will come up, which will uh, be linked to different traits and aspirations. If you want to see a different question, you just click new question here. So I'm just gonna go through this tool and then you're gonna see the finished product at the end. Okay. So you can see here, we have gone through the process and you're gonna see this sim. They say here, hey, nice to meet you. Feel free to assign my gender, adjust my appearance and select my clothing. And don't forget to give me a name. So we're gonna press okay here. You're gonna see here that she's going to come with a bunch of things. So this isn't something that is standard out of Creator Sim, but you'll see here that this is a My Story Sim. So the Creator Sim story, that's the tool we went through. And here is the Nerd Brain Aspiration. And we will go through the aspirations later in this guide, which comes with the Quick Learner uh, bonus trait. Then you'll see that all of them were assigned by creating her story. She will start off in the entertainer career. And because she will be in this entertainer career, She's going to have bonus skills. So she is going to be pre-programmed to have guitar skill, violin skill, as well as it looks like comedy here. And starting funds are standard. So Sims, depending on the kinds of questions that you ask, they can come with more money, they can come with less money. The standard is 20,000 simoleons. So we are happy with that. And then at this point, you can just click over her and then you can go into the whole customization thing of how she's going to look. So I'm just going to give her a name, Gwendolyn Lucas. That's her name. Cool. Hey, Gwen. So that was a demonstration of the Creator Sim Stories tool. Now we are going to go into the place where I personally spend the most time, and that is creating a sim from scratch. At the bottom of the screen, we're going to select Add a Sim. And a couple of options are going to come up here. There's Play with Genetics, Add a Sim from the Gallery, Add New Sim, and then Add a Sim via a Story. I am going to go to Add a New Sim. The Gallery we will get into in a separate video. It's very deeply integrated into the game, so I will be referring to it a, a bunch, but I will have a completely separate video going into a deep dive of the Gallery. Then there's also the Play with Genetics, which we will get to in the extras part of this video at the end, so you can hop to that if you want to see it. So we're going to go here to Add a New Sim. If you're not feeling very creative or you want some luck of the draw stuff, you can come right down here to randomize and click randomize and a new sim 
will be generated. So we have randomly generated this man. There's also an option to randomly generate from the gallery, but we're not going to be getting into that in this video. So straight up, it's very important to know that the Sims 4 creator sim is the most sophisticated creator sim that we have ever had in the Sim series. And I've been around for the entire Sim series. So it looks very plain, like you're like, what is happening here? There's nothing happening around the Sim. But the entire uh, power of Creator Sim comes in with clicking and dragging. And therefore, clicking and dragging in different places is going to elicit different results, which sounds simple, but depending on a couple of factors, you will have different options to click and drag at different places. So basically, if you want to rotate your sim, you can either be old fashioned and do it over here. Woo! So if you look at any of the random space around the sim and you were just to drag, you will rotate the camera yourself. So without needing to click these little uh, arrows at the bottom, you can just click to any space around the sim and you'll be able to rotate the sim. Similarly, if you would like to zoom in to your sim, you can just scroll your mouse wheel and this will take you right up close and personal with your sim and you can scroll outwards with your mouse wheel and that will take you right back out here. Now you'll notice that when I just mouse over the sim that there are different highlighted areas depending on where I am and these highlighted areas indicate an area of focus that you're going to be clicking and dragging when you do decide to click and drag. But more important to notice is that the cursor will have a distinct arrow or a distinct icon next to the next to the cursor. Okay, I'm just going to get the sim into something a little less um, towny and then you'll be able to just see the effects of the different clicking and dragging motions. So when you see the icon that has horizontal as well as vertical arrows, this indicates that the area that you are mousing over right now, if you were to click it, you can go up, down, and in and out, basically widening and narrowing. So that is the four arrowed icon. Here we're mousing over the sim's waist. If I was to click and drag this way, I am making a narrow waist and the other direction, I'm making a wider waist. So that is because it's horizontal. If I was to go up or down, it would do absolutely nothing uh, because that is not the function of this cursor area. You can then see these vertical arrows. These vertical arrows will manipulate the uh, up and downness of whatever it is that you're dragging. I must have a nicer way to say that. Nope, just makes the part that you're dragging up or down. So you go like this and you will make his chest more propped out to give him better posture or like that a little bit worse posture. If you were to go to this area on the eyes, you'll see this little rotation cursor and going like this would rotate the Sims eyes. There is also a cursor that I have not been able to find on, on masculine Sims. So I'm just going to go over to Gwen over here. And you can see here over the breast area, we have these little squares. Uh, that have an arrow towards the top right and these indicate that something can be shrunken and enlarged so breast size can be altered in this way and you can also move them. We've gone through all of the basic controls that are possible in The Sims 4's Creator Sim. Cool! In The Sims 4, there are three primary views to view your sim in, with each of them having a variation of a profile version. So technically there are actually six views and each of these different views of your sims are going to allow you to access different areas to click and drag as well as see the things that you're clicking and dragging from different perspectives. And remembering that this is just my understanding of Creator Sim, I don't have an official guide that I've referred to uh, here. This is just something that I have researched based on my abilities and tried to put together based on research and experience. We can start from this zoomed out view. So our zoom out view, that's what I'm going to be calling this. And so zoom out straight on and zoom out profile. And you will have different things to click and drag in these different profiles. For example, in this view, you can adjust the chest width. And in this view, you would be able to adjust the posture of the sim as well as the buttocks. So that is something that is can only be done by accessing from the from the profile view. 
I'm trying very hard not to use anatomical terms right now. And the back of the sim essentially has the same things that you can modify as the front. So that is our front view and profile view. Then we have a zoomed in view and we can zoom in here. Zoom in view, you will know you're in the right place because your sim will stop looking around and making noises and things like that. And they will just focus on standing still. And in this zoomed in view, you will have access to a number of things. You can see that you have access to eyebrows, eye shapes. Here you can see that you can alter the size and directions of the nose with the mouth, general shape, size, width, cheeks. We can really like all of this and these aren't things that you'd be able to edit at the zoomed out view. Here you'd only really be able to click and drag the sim's head but on the zoomed in view and you can get there by either zooming in. Sorry, I meant to say this. You can either get there from zooming in or you can just click on the head and it'll take you to the zoomed in view or you can just click back out here and it'll take you back to the zoomed out view. Much like the zoomed in view, there are different things accessible in the profile, but here it's more valuable actually just to see different aspects. So for example, so we can widen, narrow and, right and, and raise or drop our nose but in the profile view we can actually have access to rotation and then if affect the rotation of the tip of the nose there is a level beyond this and that is right here it says detailed edit mode so you can either click on the sims face or you can click detail edit mode and that'll take you super up close and personal with your sim You'll be able to modify the upper lip, the lower lip in isolation. Uh, you'll be able to modify the nostrils, the narrowness uh, or farness of the eyes, the angles of the brows, as well as general head shape things that would not be accessible in another view. And same as the other two, having the sim in profile then allows you to access different aspects of the um, of the facial features that you can modify. Cool. So now we have that basic overview of the different views. Let's actually now create things for the sim. So when clicking in the zoomed out view on the sim, you're gonna see a couple of things. I'm just gonna go here to make sure that this is what's open. You're gonna see here, this is essentially, I'd like to call this the physique panel. So uh, it affects your sim's muscularness and I say essentially their body fat percentage. So how ripped a sim is and how much fat they have on their body. So a sim can be extremely ripped, but also have a high amount of body fat. There's really a lot of variation here for the different sizes that your sims can be. If you don't really want to experiment with that, you are going to have the option to click pre-made physiques. So bodies and skin tone. So these are uh, various just body types that can be clicked and your sim will automatically be molded into those different body types. So we're gonna take one here and up here you can see that these are all of the skin tones in the game. And here we can also then select tattoos. So tattoos come in the base game. And here you will have the option of adding any of these. You can see the locations of the tattoos. So they'll show you this one will be on the left arm um, there as well. So they occupy the same slot. So you can only have one of these on the same arm at the same time but you would be able to have on the other arm a separate as another slot for tattoos separately, but once again, only be able to have a one tattoo design occupy that area. Many of these are actually customizable. So you would be able to go to, for example, the star tattoo and click blue or pink uh, or purple and get different colors of the same tattoo. Not all of them come in these color variations, but for those that do, it is an option. And you've also noticed that they that Creator Sim has taken off all the Sims clothes so that we can see uh, what it is that we're actually dealing with here. In general, when you have stuff on your Sim that you would like to remove, if you place your mouse over the area of the category that you're wanting to remove, you will see this little X if, they, if it is present and you can just click that and that'll automatically remove everything in that category that is on the sim. Now let's say I want him to have larger quads and larger calves, just drag them here, but maybe a bit smaller feet, drag there, hey, modified my sim. So coming up close here, our simi has stood still, indicating that we are in the zoom in mode. Here 
depending on where you scroll over. So we're going to go through these individual things, but depending on where you scroll over, you will see the different highlighted areas as I've pointed out previously. If you click on the hair, you will be taken to a hair menu where you'll be able to pick the Sims hair color as well as hairstyles. If you were to want to modify the size of his head here over the forehead area and you click and drag and there you can actually change in all directions the size and shape of the head. There is a head shape tab that opens up here as well with some templates that you can use and these can also just set it uh, and you can see here that that drops his brow quite significantly, that lightens it a bit. So those are just different head shape options that your sims can go through. So say I'm happy with the head shape but I really don't like his eyebrows, I think his eyebrows are a little too thin for the look I'm going for. So if I click his eyebrows, uh, this is actually an area where you can decide whether you want to match his hair colour. So you can decide not to match it and have him have a completely different hair colour uh, or you can match it. And then you will find just a bunch of different eyebrows here and you can pick the one that you think looks best on your sim or has the look that you're going for. So I like these eyebrows, they're the first one, so I'm going to pick them. But say I'm actually not too happy with the placement of the eyebrows, so I can, I can go over here and I can see that this is my up and down left right and I can actually bring them lower if I wanted to or way up here, make him super surprised. Bring them down a bit lower and I can also go outwards and that will then widen the, that'll then increase the width of the eyebrows. You can also rotate if I go to the inner corners here. If I go to the inner corner of the eyebrows, you can rotate the angle of those inner corners. Now moving on to the eyes. Here we can change the different eye colors of our sim. So say we want him to have either very dark eyes or lighter brown eyes or red eyes or pink eyes or blue eyes or whatever color eyes you would like. I'm going to give him a lighter brown color eyes. And I like his eye shape. I'm not too, I'm not too worried about it, but I actually want to maybe just make them a little bit larger even so i make his eyes a bit larger you can see here once again i get the little rotation option to rotate the inner corners of the eyes and moving on to the nose personally i'm terrible with noses i just pick a pre-made i like this one i don't want to mess with it i think it's a nice nose I'm just gonna leave that nose but you would technically be able to modify the uh the location of the nose and if you go over to the side here the general size of the nose same clicking on the cheeks clicking on the jaw will bring you all these different options so there's what you can click and drag and then there's also the different pre-made options there if you go to the side, you'll be able to see the sim's ears and you can adjust its the size and uh, location of the sim's ears. There's even some different options there for you. So then say I like most of this, but I still wanna edit him a little bit more. So I'm gonna go into detail edit mode. And here in detail edit mode, I think his lips are just a little too upturned. So I'm just gonna bring them down a little bit. I think I'd like to just modify his nose a little bit, make it a bit sharper, make this a bit sharper here. Okay, and I can just, every time you're done with an area, you just have to click away. There's nothing crazy that you need to do. Then while we are at the face, you can modify facial hair. Facial hair can be set per outfit. So Sims have different outfits for different occasions. So in general, his facial hair for his everyday outfit seems to be this beard, but you would be able to subcategorize them into beards, goatees, mustaches, and same thing with hair. Actually, you can change it from short. Uh, you can filter them by short, medium, long, up to. And you'd also be able to filter them through this little tool up here where you can choose different outward categories, whether something is masculine or feminine, afro textured, straight, wavy. So there's a bunch of different options to make sure that you find something that you're looking for. And Sims here can also have hats, but accessories. So we get to accessories. We'd have the option here of let's go to the piercings here. So even though accessories is the general broad category, we can go deeper into the filtration by going straight here so say we want we didn't really want earrings but i think he'd actually look cool with some glasses on so let's give him a pair of glasses i'd like him to have these glasses i think they look nice if you see an option that has these come up much like the tattoos if you click on it you'll be able to pick the different colors of this item so i like these glasses i think they suit him and from a necklace's point of view, any of these, no, nah, I'm not so into the necklaces, they're fine. Then there is the makeup category where you'd be able to add different makeup. 
I guess this can be very in detail depending on how much you want to do, go into it um, with the feminine option here. So it's masculine is ticked, but with the feminine option having a lot more available. Now we can move on to his outfits. So styled looks over here. These are basically pre-made looks where you will not actually need to do much. They already stuff that... Uh, EA or Maxis has made and you can see it in different colors there's a bunch of different options here um, much some of them are just very Star Warsy. but say I like this country club casual look I like it in this pink color so I just click try the style or I just click it and try the style whatever I actually don't know if it makes a difference whether you click it or not so that would be for the everyday if I wanted more control of what he was wearing you just go here to tops and then these are all the tops and then once again you can go into the individual categories here and click on them to go to their uh, distinct categories. So here say I actually want them to have a blazer. So here's a nice blazer that would maybe look nice in this red. And maybe I don't like that outfit as much and I'm just going to go here to maybe some jeans. I think some jeans would look nice. And shoes. I think his shoes these would be nicer. So I've actually changed the look quite a bit. Uh, you also have the option, so when you are in the zoomed out mode, the accessories that you click here are different to the accessories that are options when you're in the zoomed in mode. Here you will have access to bracelets, gloves, rings, leggings, and socks. So I wanted, if I wanted to give him socks, here are some cute socks. I'm going to give him stripy socks, so I've given him stripy socks. Your sims can have up to five different outfits, meaning that in game you will be able to have up to five different like everyday outfits so he would have all of these that he can rotate between so yeah here you would be able to modify everything from his hair glasses makeup jewelry everything would be able to be fixed to an outfit you can then do this for formal wear uh athletic wear sleep wear party wear swim wear hot weather and cold weather hot weather and cold weather i'm surprised that they're here i think they they i thought that they were exclusive to seasons they may be and it's just there because i have other seasons content and in all of these categories you will still have your styled look so i don't like this styled look for party wear what do i like here from party wear let's say this beach one looks nice i like that outfit i'm keeping that so this is the gist of creating the physical sim now we are going to get into the segment on personality we're going to go to this little corner up here so let's click personality which opens up this new menu here you will decide what your sim's name is so they say hello my name is and you just click this and then you can have a first name and a last name that is generated so you basically just randomize until you find one that you like so i'm going to say that this is cameron lucas which is the same surname as Gwendolyn. And here you can pick the uh, gender of the sim, which then can also be customized. So these are the different uh, places where you can decide the age of the sim. So here's he in toddler form, here he is in child form, here he is in teen form, adult, young adult, adult, elder. So that is at the, as they go through the different stages. So Gwendolyn is an adult, so I'm gonna make him an adult too. And you can then also just choose a, a walk style that you think would be a classic of that sim. You can then also adjust the sim's voice. And then if you have a, a household with multiple sims, this is the relationship panel. So you can say edit relationships and then you can say Gwendolyn. So let's say Gwendolyn, you can either be his sister or his wife. So let's say it's his wife and press yes. So that's relationship has been connect, created. If we go to Gwendolyn here, We'll go here to relationship and that will say Cameron is her husband. The next aspect of the personality panel that is very important to understand is the aspiration and traits panel. And we will get to the details of what an aspiration means practically in the game in the uh, gameplay segment of this series. But essentially the aspiration is what your sim aspires to. It's what they want to achieve in their life. You can go between different aspirations. You don't need to complete aspirations before you achieve them. Uh, but remembering that each of these aspirations whichever one you pick you will get a bonus trait so these can only be taken once and even if you change aspirations in future they will still have those core bonus traits so let's say he's a popularity sim and he wants to be friend of the world and picking a trait so you can either pick traits from a strategic point of view that will make whatever your goals are inside the sims for uh, easier or you can do it from a from a quirkiness point of view so here are the traits that the sim will have which theoretically should impact how they interact with the world so you have emotional traits hobby related traits lifestyle related traits and social traits so from the emotional traits these just mean that your sim will be in an emotion a little bit more frequently than others so i'm gonna make him cheerful and 
from a social point of view i think he's definitely going to be outgoing and let's give him something interesting let's say he is also clumsy so that is his personality and that is our sim so we have actually created a sim now if we wanted to have a child we can go here to add a sim we're gonna go to play with genetics play with genetics can bring up cameron and gwendolyn and you will then have their genetics come together to randomize a sim and you can decide the age of the sim they can be toddler child teen or young adult because they are adults so let's say i'm going to make some one of every age category here so i'm going to say that they live with let's take this away let's say i want someone who's going to be a sibling of cameron let's say cameron has a sister that lives with them you can randomize a twin which will have the same genetic the exact same facial features you can randomize a sister which will just have the same core features as cameron but with some adjustments just every time you run it so let's say this is his sister who is a young adult and she is living with them and we'll just randomize her traits we'll randomize her first name as well rochelle so that is how you would have genetics from a single sim if you wanted them to have a family member that resembles them if we wanted a child between gwendolyn and cameron let's give them this kitty um so we can then once again just randomize and you can notice that the sims face changes as well every time because different genetics are being uh randomized so say you have, they have a son children have different different aspirations to adults so here they can be creative mental motor or social and they have similar traits not i don't have access to all of them but similar ones so we're just going to give him marcus lucas and then we're going to give him a baby sister who is a toddler so yeah you can say you can either reverse create and create his parent from there but i want to create his sister so we're gonna do that and if we create her toddlers don't have aspirations however they do have different traits available to them and you can go through each of them and just see what each of them mean here's jem lucas and here you can see when you go into the different household relationships because of the way that we've gone through genetics the game recognizes that gwendolyn is her mother cameron is her father rochelle is her aunt marcus is her brother and we're going to have someone from all of the different uh ages age groups so that you can see how each of them look and all the different options so we're going to play with genetics again now i want a teenager and i'm going to make a teen so we're going to make the sister of jim and here she is and she will have two trait slots and the same aspirations as that an adult can have so her name is zoe and you can have up to eight sims in a household and then finally we are going to have an elder and i'm going to take gwendolyn and I'm going to make the parent of Gwendolyn. Let's just make it a grandpa. And we're going to give him, much like everyone else, a styled look. Let's do this. Proper style, guys. Proper top class style. So this will then be the family. So say I'm not happy with this family, but I don't have the time to come back to them. I actually have the option to save this family into a library and then come back to them later and be able to actually continue working where i left off so i can go up here to the save household button i usually just then if i want to come back to them say save household to my library and there i've saved the household lucas and so if i was to quit the game and come back at a later point i can just go here to open the gallery go to my library and right here will be the lucas family and i will then be able to place the household and then here you I can decide to replace them in, in case I didn't have had another random sim and here would be everyone however I realized that Gwendolyn's story isn't isn't here anymore sorry didn't realize that in general it is possible to use cheats in create a sim uh, I'm not going to go into that in too much detail in this video my question of the day to you is do you prefer to spend your time in create a sim live mode or build by mode let me know in the comments I look forward to reading them if you found this video helpful please let me know by leaving a thumbs up please subscribe if you haven't done so already and want to see the next video in this series as well as the other content that i have coming up i stream weekly on twitch schedule in the description so please join us over there if you have any questions or just want to hang out and hopefully we'll see you in the next video so so um had to go but yeah it's been very fun oh <gasps> thank you rapi
Thank you so much. You guys are really, really kind and really, really generous. You are really, really like I appreciate it. Thank you guys. Thank you all. Really. Your support means the world to me. Thank you. <laughs> you just did that for the first time. Wow. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for giving your first sub to, to We Sims. I appreciate it.